Hey, I wanted to do a uh, quick video lesson for y'all about utilizing your capo to eliminate songs that you find that are all sharps and flats. Uh, usually just results in you trying to play bar chords and, you know, while it is possible, it just gets really tiring on your hands and it just doesn't sound as good, it doesn't have as many open resonating strings. So um, I I'm giving my, my cousin guitar lessons right now and she brought me this song by this guy named uh, Hozier, I think it is. And he's got this song called The Work Song. I've honestly like forgotten the melody already, but it went something along, the hook to it went something like this. Doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, the, the verse to that song is B flat. C minor. Now, a lot of times when I play, you know, open strings, you'll see where my thumb is now. I don't put my thumb on the back of the neck until I'm doing like a bar or like I'm really getting into it, you know, when I'm playing a solo or something. So it's going to put a lot of strain on your hand. It's going to hurt a lot. Um, I know a lot of the guitar apps have, you know, transpose buttons on them these days, but it's really good to know how to do this on the fly. So this, let's take this song, for instance, we have B flat, we have C minor, G minor, and F. Those are all bar chords. So what can you do? First, you need to understand a little bit about the, how to find the notes on the neck of the guitar. If you don't know how to do that yet, that's fine. I'm going to show you. It's like one of the easiest things you could do. All you need to remember is that there are only two instances of a half step when you're counting notes. Everything else is a whole step. A whole step is a fret between. So if you're going from your first to your third fret, that is a whole step because there is a fret between the notes. If you're going from the first fret to the second fret, that is a half step. There are two instances of half steps. You can count this all the way up and find a note anywhere. And that is between the E and the F and the B and the C. So I take you probably know your open strings. So once you get to the 12th fret, it just starts over again. So it's really easy. So we're just going to say E and we have a half step, F. You want to think about your open string as an invisible fret up here. We're not, it's not real. It's just pretend. But here's our open fret, and we're a half step to F. We know that the only other half step is between B and C, so everything else has to go F to G, G to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E. And we're at the octave, and you can do that with every string. I can go G, open G to A, to B, to C, to D, to E, to F, to G, and I'm back at my octave. So now that we've kind of got that covered, let's take this song for instance. The first chord, I was playing it up here I think at first. Let's do it uh, on the, the, the low E. So let's find E to F to G to A to B, B flat. This is where we are. So we can play a bar, just looks like an F. If you know your full bar F, you can move that all over the place. Our next one is a C minor, which, you know, we were playing here. You can also play it here. We, uh, we also have a G minor um, here. We have the F and then the other two chords we've already covered. So if I put, uh, let me, I'll try to put it this way. I'm trying to find common chord positions here. So I need to, I'm going to start just because I know, and I'll explain where I'm going to go to the third fret. I'm going to capo. Like, why the heck are you going to third fret? I'll explain. Because now, what we just did where we counted, we're just going to pretend this is gone. This is now the first fret. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. You, you can think of it if you want to in terms of you know, the E, the e, A, D, G, B, E. But what we're really doing is now the first note here is actually G. Well, we know that there is a half, a whole step between G and 
A, so second, and then we know that there is a whole step between A and B. If it be flat, where does that put us? Third fret in our, you know, this is doesn't exist. In our third fret. So if you think about now, let's pretend this does exist again. What note is the third fret on your low E? Well, it's G, right? So now, well, this is gone again. We're on the third fret. Well, now we can, we're playing a G position, but this is a B flat. So let's take our next chord, C minor. Again, this was a barred chord on the third fret. Well, check it out where I'm at. I'm on the third fret. Uh, and so what I can do is I can take my, my C minor and now I'm, I can make this an A minor position. That is because the minor position, believe it or not, let me take this off for a second. All of your, your bar stuff is trans, transferable. So you have your F and actually an E major that you play. It's just an F with your imaginary fret here, you know, if you were to... So when we have C minor, really what we're doing, if we keep moving back down, it's an A minor. We just finger it differently when we play it down here. So we're going back to three. Hopefully you're following me here. The B flat, because ignore the capo for a minute, E, F, G, A, B, and then flat. Now let's pay attention to the capo again. One, two, three, G. So the C minor was on a bar on the third fret, and now I already have that barred for me, so I just can make an A minor position. Uh, what are the other chords? G minor. So G uh, is already barred. That was, again, you know, it was like, if I'm using my finger to illustrate, but that was a G minor. Well, I can play an E minor here because again, you have your G minor. It's just an E minor. We just play it differently when we play it down lower, just because it's easier to land those two fingers than it is to your pinky and your, your ring finger. So putting it back on third, We have that, uh, you know, we have our G position for our B flat. We have an A minor position for our C minor. Um, we have an E minor for our G minor. Now we're like, oh, geez, what's, what are we gonna do with the F? Because we were playing it all the way down here. Well, again, let's, uh, let's ignore the capo for a minute and go back. So we were thinking in terms of the low E string well, F is going to be, you know, all the way up here past the octave. So we know that at some point, the fifth fret, we started repeating in notes. So ignore the capo. We are imaginary fret E, F, G, and then A. And that actually is the open A string. So we can just start over again. So we have, again, we're ignoring the capo. A, B, C, B, half step to B to C, D. E, the whole step, and then a half step to F. So now let's pay attention to the capo again. Where are we? We're at one, two, three, four, five. So that would be the fifth fret, typically on the A string, if we're gonna ignore the capo once again, is a D note. So that tells you that you can play a D position here. So your F has now become D. So this song now sounds like uh, this. Look how much more relaxed my hand is. I'm not pushing on the back. Before I was playing this song like, So much tension in the back of my hand here. Oh, my strap's in the way. But playing that G minor. Uh, what, what other chords did we have? An F. Uh, we had the B flat. I mean, there's so much tension in my forearm from that. And I changed that by throwing a capo on. Third fret. 
and now I have my look where my thumb is. It's this is just resting in my the palm of my hand. So much easier to play. So that was one example. I'll do another quick example because I've already got the concept I think down. I hopefully hopefully you follow me. If not. Um, you know, please just reach out to me via social media. I post on YouTube and Reddit and a couple of, you know, Facebook groups and stuff. Um, you can always contact me there. Um, a song that's near and dear to my heart, the green rolling hills of West Virginia. You know, you look this up and it says it's an E flat. It's a B flat. So it's saying it's like the green rolling hills of West Virginia, A flat. To heaven that I know. Again, it's like that's a bunch of bar chords. Who wants to play that? So let's throw our capo on to uh well the first fret because I already knew I was gonna do that. So not like I'm making this up on the fly, I just thought about it a little bit. So my my E flat, what I'm gonna do is because the E is the open string all the way at the octave. I know it's like too far for me to think about playing chords, so I'm gonna start on the A string and I'm gonna work my way up and see where it gets me. So I had A to, we're ignoring the capo, A to B, half step to C, D and E, okay? So if we keep the capo here, you know, what can we, what can we do? We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, because this is the E flat. You follow this, ignoring the capo, 7th fret of the A string is an E, so we're in a flat. Now, we're paying attention to the capo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5th fret, A string is a D. So, we can now play this A flat as a D. The uh, B flat in that is really simple because it's a bar so all we need to think about is that, remember I was kind of demonstrating how whenever we're doing our bar, they're movable. So you want to now think about, think about the capos just being your index finger here. And there's the bar for the B flat. Well, that's on the second fret now that the capo is on. It's just an A position. Or however you, I play an A this way, this way, this way, whatever you play it. It's just an A now. Um, and the other chord in that song was an A flat. So forget the capo, E to F, half step, whole step to G, uh, whole step to A. So then we're gonna flat that, A flat. Well, again, let's put the capo back on. One, two, three. We're on the third fret. It's a G position, G note. Technically an A flat, but when you put the capo on and you're thinking about your positions, it's, it's now G. So that song went from being really annoying to play. The green rolling hills of West Virginia are the nearest thing to heaven that I know. So now it's a lot easier for me to play. I can play a D, I can play an A, and I can play a G. So the green rolling hills of West Virginia are the near, nearest thing to heaven that I know. So you can do this uh, pretty much pretty much any song. You got to play around with it a little bit. Um, you get to um, you know just think about first what note are you actually hitting and then think about what your which note note that capo is making it appear to be so just real quick overview again let's do the hosier song g minor again we are movable bar chords you think about you can think about the capo as your index finger if you want and the g minor I am, I am putting a fake finger on this, and so now I only need to do this chord, E minor. So, uh, any questions, reach out to me on social media, I'm always available. Thanks.